Howdy folks, Roach here. Like the new uh, setup here, um, we can thank uh, Elaine for this. Uh, I was able to get a new camera. Um, I apologize for the ambient noise in the background. Uh, I will have something that solves that problem uh, by the next video. Uh, unfortunately, you're gonna have to bear with it. Uh, this video is called Recon. Now I'll be doing uh, more of these Recon videos. Uh, this video is called Enemy Identification. Uh, I believe uh, it, we've come to the time uh, where we really need to identify who the enemy is uh, because a lot of people don't know. Okay, I, I, I've been very active on Twitter. Uh, I am uh, Pool. if you'd like to uh, follow me. Uh, I would sure appreciate it. I will follow you back. Okay, and uh, you'll see some insight there that uh, uh, you know, at least from my Twitter feed, that uh, you know you might not see uh, uh, from other people. So let's get into enemy identification. Okay. If you're going to fight something, you need to know what it is that you you should be fighting. I see a lot of energy being wasted here in this country uh, fighting uh, folks that really aren't their enemy. Okay. Uh, people who call themselves patriots. Okay. It, it's very important if you're going to call yourself a patriot to know exactly what it is that you're fighting for. Because if you don't know, um, you, you could be fighting for the enemy. And what I observe out there are very few people truly know what it is that they're fighting for. They have an idea. Um, a lot of them, uh, they, they fight for the flag, okay, or they fight for the country. Or, uh, or the United States of America, uh, but they really don't know w w why. Okay, uh, only that you know they were born here. This is their country, and uh, you know everybody else is doing it. Uh, but for me, I had to know a little bit more about what it means to be an American. Now, don't get me wrong. Okay, the principles I'm going to talk about here um, go beyond just the United States. Okay, um, these things are uh, inherent uh, across all people uh, across this planet because everyone is battling the same same group. And it would be nice if we could actually focus our energy on the people who are truly causing the problems rather than fighting one another. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, one of the things, uh, right now, I'm just going to say uh, that the enemy has a trick, and it use, and he's, he and, and they have been using this trick over and over and over again, and it works on us, okay? This is an aspect of our physiology, our, our personalities, our psychology, and they know what these tools are, and they use these tools against us. And we fall for it over and over and over again. And what they do is they use labels, okay? They use identities, okay? And that causes us to form groups. Then they instigate a conflict between the two groups and we fight amongst ourselves, okay? Uh, some, of the, some of the labels uh, that they use are, um, you know, uh, socialist or conservative or capitalist, or communist, or liberal, okay? Uh, these things, these terms evolve over time, okay? Now usually what happens, and the way this works, is they'll speak to you and tell you exactly what you wanna hear. They'll tell you things that resonate deeply in you, that, that you know is right, and you feel is right, Okay, and that's how they lure you into these groups. It sounds good, doesn't it? I mean, you know, the promises of utopia, the promises of, you know, what was it, uh, uh, the rule of law. That's a good one. 
uh, or democracy. Uh, I mean, the rule of law, really. Um, I don't remember man writing the laws of gravity or physics or even our nature, our inherent nature. Um, that's that's bogus. So the rule of law, what, what are we talking about? We're talking about the rule of man over other men, okay? Not just general law and how it applies to, you know, men, okay? Now, these flesh robots have inherent aspects uh, to them, and the enemy wants to separate us uh, from that. And they do that by distracting us. They do that by uh, introducing conflict. Um, they do that by occupying our time uh, with trying to sustain ourselves. I, I, I mean, how, how much more do you have to work? Uh, uh, how many years do you have to work just to have a roof over your head? Okay, that's scary. How long you have to work and labor just so you can have cover. Or your food. Okay, now these guys could have just as easily said, hey, your labor is is valuable uh, and it's so valuable that you only really have to devote three days a week to actually providing the, the means to sustain yourself. They could have designed it that way, but they didn't because design scarcity is a great way of keeping you busy uh, so that you don't realize who's actually uh, uh, causing your problems. Okay, so First, what they'll do is they'll say, hmm, okay, uh, we're going to have a particular group and, you know, who, who, who you know, it, it doesn't matter what the label is, okay? So then they're going to tell you things that resonate with you. You're going to then identify yourself as that group. Then they'll slowly start introducing changes into that group, okay? Uh, the leadership and those with the vision at the top of the groups start re-steering the group in a different direction to where it doesn't really even resemble what it started out as. So you'll have people that support a particular label and you know the, the group now is engaging in all manner of, of uh, atrocity and, and it leaves the, the honest members of the group having to defend the most horrible conduct. Okay? So, you know, we, we've got religious division, We've got economic division. We've got age division. Uh, I mean, we've got political differences. We've got ethnic differences. Okay, and, and all of which um, we're sitting here, and and none of that matters. It is a tool used specifically to create conflict, so that we beat our beat each other up, and, and they just simply they they just simply uh, uh, you know. They don't even have to lift a finger because we're doing all the heavy lifting. We're doing all the skull cracking on, on our neighbors or anybody else that we perceive as not us. You know, which is an odd notion because we're all the same. We're all in flesh robots, right? We didn't have much choice which flesh robots we were, we were placed in. You know, not not in the you know constructive reality that you know that that we exist in. Um, there was probably a choice, but it wasn't a conscious choice, uh, at least not now. So, how, how do you combat uh, an enemy? And and you know, and and what are we truly fighting here? What is it that we're truly fighting? Okay, we're fighting a. It's a conflict between methodologies, govern uh, methodologies of governance. Okay, so I'm going to move into my presentation here. Okay, and there it is. This is a war of governance. Okay, and there are two distinct philosophies here. Okay, and um, all governments, all structures will fall into that. Now, one of these is very well represented. And in fact, we've been uh, operating under that type of governance uh, for at least 2,000 years and even before that. Um, and, and, you know, to get, to, to, to truly understand the conflict, know that they're attempting to 
you know, posit this, the same model that hasn't worked over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, the only difference is it's just being applied to a larger and larger group of people. Uh, it, it, it is an oppression. And when that oppression is applied to a people, the natural tendency of those people is to oppress themselves and each other, to split into independent groups and then just start beating the heck out of one another. And this is what's happening in, 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 in the world right now. I mean, you, you think that, that another nation is actually responsible for, for, you know, why your life sucks. Or it's another group. Oh, it, it, it's those liberals. They're doing it. No, no. I, I mean, and if you keep fighting the liberals, you're not actually going to get anywhere near the, the, the folks that are truly staging all of this. Okay? So... We have two distinct models. I'll go into the one we're always used to that's in place right now. All they're trying to do is expand it uh, globally. Now, is this a war between the quote-unquote nationalists or the patriots and the globalists? No, it's not. It's a war of, of a type of governance. Okay? All right. So... This first one is called what I call the king and subject model. And this is the model that, w that that's in place right now. Okay? You got a king at the top. You've got middlemen that enforce the king's will onto the lower rungs of society, which technically I call the livestock. Because quite frankly, that's the way they're treated. They're beasts of burden and they feed everything up the chain. Now, this works great for people in, uh, in in the two top rungs. It doesn't really work too good for the livestock. They get nothing, or certainly not an. Uh, and now nowadays it's getting so bad where I mean I don't care how much labor and how much time you put in, you still can't feed yourself. All right. Now this is a, an effective model. Don't get me wrong. It's very effective. Okay, it, it means that a few at the top can control a large number of people, and it is control. Okay. Now, one of the reasons it works is because these guys at the bottom always want to be in the middle tier or or to be the king himself, so they literally fight for the system and maintain the system. Okay. So it, 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 it's self-replicating and self-sustaining that way in that the bottom always wants to be the middle tier so they'll fight amongst one another to try to get elevated up to the point, uh, up to the top. And then here in, in the middle rungs, they'll fight amongst one another to be king. Now the king, from that point, he only has to control the two people below him or, you know, or, or the uh, a small number of groups below him. Now who, who are these people? Okay, these are your George Soros's, these are your governments, okay, your nation's governments, your nations themselves, okay, these are your Barbara Streisand's, these are your Rob Reiner's, I don't need to single them, I don't mean to necessarily single them out, but if they truly knew what they were doing, uh, they'd be crapping themselves right now, because they're not helping themselves, because quite frankly, the... You know how this is going to evolve is the guy at the top doesn't want to have to manage and create such such a you know and maintain such a complex system because you you, you have to you have to look in, in order to create this illusion. Okay, you, you you have to have a Hollywood churning out all kinds of false realities. You have to have this massive media. That's totally filtering the content in the news. Okay, you have to have all of these nations and governments and all of those people, and the guys at the top don't want to keep greasing those guys because it takes an enormous amount of energy just to maintain control over the livestock, and that's what we're talking about here. It's a livestock management program. Okay, so these folks here, you know, these are your medias, these are your government officials, right? They're the ones, you know, and, and they're not the police officers, okay? The police officers are down at this level. They're only one little tick above the, the bottom level. You know, I, I, it boggles my mind why a police officer who, who would 
want to do something otherwise, you know, uh, you know, th these guys are well intentioned. You know, the, <coughs> the livestock itself, they're going crazy, you know, and they're they're trying to keep order. They're trying to keep the livestock from being killed or da property from being damaged or uh, or trying to protect people in the middle rungs. OK, so this is a system that's going on right now. All right. So what's the war over? OK, so you have the king and subject model and then you have the uh, self-determined model. OK. Oh, oh, what is that? Well, there was an experiment uh, back in 1776 that tried to actually create a system of self-determined governance. Okay, uh, there were some folks they and we called them here in the United States the founding fathers, uh, and it was primarily uh, uh, you know based on uh, the workings of. Uh, Thomas Paine and uh, Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and uh, Patrick Henry and Sam Adams. I mean, these folks, uh, John Hancock, uh, these folks got together and they started looking at a self-determined model. And what is a self-determined model? Okay, a self-determined model is everybody is king and queen. Everybody enjoys what's called equity. One isn't any more important uh, than another, and one doesn't have any more power than another. And how the self-determined model governs themselves is they, in, uh, they create a trust, and trustees, these guys down in the purple, then serve the general, the, the general good and, and, and the public at that level. Okay? They are still, they still enjoy just as many rights as everybody else, but they serve everyone else, and they're called public servants, okay? This was the Republic, okay? Now, you patriots out there that are all excited about what you see about, the, you know, uh, what's happening in the elections, you know, Folks, um, since 1861 and secret balloting, uh, I don't think we've had an honest, fair election, at least in this country. And if your country is engaged in ballots, in, in balloting that uh, that is uh, anonymous, where you can't verify um, uh, who who voted for who, uh, then those those elections can be stolen very easily. And what's going on here since the midterm elections here in the United States is a lot of stealing of elections. And if you look at our uh, our, our brothers over in the UK, uh, here here a majority of the people voted to leave the uh, European Union, and the government didn't. They went and they asked the government, "Hey, should we leave the EU?" And the people came back and said yes. Then what happened? Oop. Oh, that wasn't supposed to happen. They were supposed to love the EU, but they didn't. So now they're trying to backpedal. So Theresa May has come up with this monstrous plan nobody wants, just so she can uh, save political face. You know, what, what is it? You know, across the water, all of us are looking at our governments and are saying, you know what, they're really not listening to us why isn't that i mean you know don't we have constitutional rights <laughs> no you have constitutionally protected rights now if you want to be a patriot that's great i would suggest if you do want to call yourself a patriot and i see a a a, a, a make a great uh make america great uh or a maga tag on, on a lot of the twitter people that follow me and i don't mean to disparage them but I'd just like to know how many of those people have actually read the founding documents. That is, the Declaration of Independence. That's your real power document there, folks. The Constitution, the U.S. Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. Because if you haven't read those, then you have no business calling yourself a patriot. I'm sorry. I know your heart's in the right place, but you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're fighting for. 
And I've seen many times people calling themselves patriots, advocating a return to the you know a lawful government, when they don't even know what the heck they're talking about. Because quite frankly, under a lawful government, most of the people out there would have a problem. A lot of them would end up on a rope. I would suggest reading. Oh, hang on. Let me uh, let me switch here. Get to the main screen. I would suggest that there's this little booklet here, okay, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there who would deem it subversive information, but what it does, what it has in it is, you know, here, here is, uh, it's a citizen rule book, jury handbook, okay, and if you want to know where to get some, they're, they're actually really expensive, inexpensive. I get a bunch of them, I hand them out to people. Okay, so there's there's the address. It's Witten Printers. I don't necessarily need to advertise for them. Uh, they print a lot of these. Uh, they're, they're, you know, they're decent folks. Uh, they're right-minded in that they know what the problem is in, here in the United States. The problem in here, here in the United States is ignorance of the law. The people at the top use the law against us, and we don't even... You know, we think, oh my gosh, oh you know, uh, you know, I vote and but nothing happens. Well, no, of course not. You know, just like uh, Samuel Clemens or Mark Twain said. You know, if voting mattered, they wouldn't let us do it. <laughs> he said that a long time ago. That was back then, right? Has anything changed? No. All right, so you petition and you demonstrate. You know how many petitions? You know, you get you know, million signatures. They send it out to the White House, and then what? Nothing happens. They don't even listen to you. Right? So then you go out and protest. Then what do they do? <laughs> they tear gas you and crack your skulls. Understand that it's a livestock management program. Okay? That, and it is what I call the, the, uh, the uh, democracy illusion. Okay? They give you the illusion that there's a democracy. And that you have power. Well, you don't want a power. You don't want a democracy because it's a mob. You want a representative republic. Well, that went out the window in March of 1861. All right. So you read this book. It has a copy of the Constitution in it. It has a copy of the Declaration of Independence. And I'll tell you what, folks. You read the Declaration of Independence. No kidding. You're going to see exactly... The same things taking place in your society right now. I don't care what government you are, uh, what nation you're in. You're going to see the same things occurring right now as occurred when the people of America decided they'd had enough of King George. Almost word for word. I mean, it will freak you out. Now, there are a lot of people who are like-minded in this country. If, if, if they could just figure out what it is that they need to do, we could solve the problem. If I had 12 people that knew the law like I know the law, oh, we could, we could solve Texas's problem in an afternoon. We don't have courts of law in this country. We have administrative and procedural courts. They're not interested in prosecuting the criminals. Why? <laughs> because they are the criminals. They're the middlemen. Okay? Now, what's going on with all of these caravans and, you know, and, and like the invasion of Europe and, and what are they doing? Well, they're managing livestock right now. That's what they're doing. It's a livestock management program. And, and the powers that be that control most of the assets out there, okay, they're tired of, uh, of wasting so many resources in managing, simply managing the livestock. Okay? So what they're doing is they're looking for ways to simplify and minimize the number of middlemen in the process. Okay? So that's what's happening. Right? Fewer and fewer people making decisions. That means fewer and fewer people for the guys at the top to watch and manage. Now, I don't mean to disparage uh a particular religion. However, it has come to my attention that a particular religion has been co-opted and is being used to simplify the livestock management program. Okay? And when I said, hey, they throw labels out and it sounds good initially and then all of a sudden they start changing the back end of it. 
Uh, uh, Islam is one of those one of those places. Um, the West hates the Muslims, and the rhetoric coming out of a lot of Muslim countries, uh, you know, isn't uh, isn't particularly favorable to the West. I mean, you know, um, the U.S. is literally called the Great Satan. You know, in one sense, they're right. We're going to have to admit that. Because, you know, hey, we're livestock. Why? Because we don't know the law. If you don't know the law, you're livestock. The cows do not tell the farmer how to run his, his farm. Okay, sorry. And if you're a cop, then, hey, shoot, you're probably, uh, you know, the horse. <laughs> the horse don't run the farm either. The horse might, you know, or, or the sheepdog, you know. You might be the sheepdog. You don't have any, uh, it, it, it really, any more authority uh, uh, or any power of self-determination than, than, you know, than the, we cows. All right? So, Islam, when you look, and, 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 and look at what's happening now. I, I, I mean, I am going to, I, I don't mean to impugn anybody. I just want to look at it from a, from a practical perspective from a practical sense of what I see, which really has nothing to do with submitting specifically to, you know, the being that men call God. It has everything to do with control. It's a very effective means of doing this. There's a contract in the Quran. Once you sign on to that contract, then you're in. And it's a blood contract, folks. Now, that's not particularly a bad thing, okay? It, 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 as long as, you know, and, 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 and the structure under Sharia law uh, wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, too, except for one thing, and I do have one problem with it. And, and you look at it from a livestock management program, um, the women really don't have any say in it, right? So now you got half the population... Uh, you know, half the cows automatically controlling the other cows. Like the guys at the top don't even have to worry about the women anymore. Why? Because the infrastructure itself takes care of the women, right? So they don't have to worry about that. They don't have to worry about the men. Okay, so now, all right, so if the men are being taken care of by the women, um, I, I see a tendency for men who uh, to just get rather lazy. Okay and want to keep things the same okay now i'm sure people don't like what i have to say they come and kill me if you believe that the being that men call god or allah uh, uh, needs me killed and you believe that me trying to uh you know protect the rights of every man woman and child on, on this planet is, is something that allah and uh, or the being that man calls God, uh, it doesn't want. Uh, then I, I I think you need to get back to the books and read them a little bit more closely. Now with Islam, okay, and I, it would work fine, provided the leadership of the top is accountable, is truly accountable to Allah and truly accountable. But the problem is, is these. The structure can be intercepted at any time at any level. Are you sure that the guys at the top of whatever uh, of whatever pyramid are indeed those those people? Because if others get control of the uh, of the religious hierarchy, then you may be doing the opposite of what that universal being wants you to do. Okay, so. Uh, but, however, from the perspective of managing livestock, it's brilliant. It, it doesn't take very many people in the hierarchy to control a vast amount. Because of the nature of Sharia law, which provides, and, and don't get me wrong, Sharia law is a civilized system of law, meaning that you have remedy and recourse to the law. You don't have that within the government systems of the United States anymore, and you don't enjoy due process of law anymore. 
You're seeing examples of this. I had uh, um, agents of the U.S. Secret Service and the agents of the U.S. Treasury tell me directly that the system does not provide for remedy and recourse to the law or due process of law. Okay, That means they can jerk you out of your bed anytime, beat you to death, throw you in jail, execute you, and you don't see 12 people that determine whether it's true. Now, in Sharia law, they have their own courts. People are weighed against the standard. Okay? And, and, and with that, uh, th there is a degree of fairness there, and there is a degree of recourse. However, my question is, do you really know uh, whether L Louis Farrakhan is truly operating under un uh, under you know lawful principles or if he's working for the enemy and I say well, I, I tell you, you you can tell by their actions you know uh, somebody was trying to uh, to install a, uh, a, a you know the Islamic Caliphate in, in Syria uh, murdering murdering hundreds of thousands of folks chopping people's heads off you know if you're going to simply call people infidels and that gives you the justification for killing them okay what happens when you kill somebody who is not an infidel somebody who knows the law and who is probably uh, more in submission than you are then you break the law and if that goes unpunished, then you threaten your entire system. So you see all over the all over the world now, uh, Muslims, okay, being elected, and the implementation of Sharia law. Why? Because that's what the enemy wants. It's a great way of managing people. And if those, uh, most especially if those people are livestock and require management. Okay? Because if you're not responsible for yourself, and if you're ignorant of the law, then you are not responsible. Then uh, somebody else is responsible for you, and you better do what they tell you. Because they have the power of law behind them. Now, if you're educated in the law, then you have the power of law uh, behind you. But in this country, this information should be required for every child in America. Every single child must know what's in here. At least what's in here. Now if you read this and you come to talk to me, I'll, hey, I'll, there's a finishing school. The difference is godlessness and people who are in communion with that one singular supreme being. That's the difference. You look at communism, what do they do? Well, it, it, it promotes atheism. It's a demoralization. They separate you from your, from, you know, the being through which all of your rights are endowed. Handy. Because if you believe that there is no God because you don't see proof and you don't see proof because you don't uh, you don't get proof until you're ready to recognize I mean there's certain steps you have to take before before that being can even can even uh, communicate with you and it's not like that being isn't communicating with you it's just that you have to be in the right position to appreciate that communication otherwise you're not fused with it you are confused But if you take the right steps, one of them is know the law, then you'll understand the nature of this being, and you'll understand how, he, how that being communicates with you. Otherwise, you're just going to remain distracted. Uh, you're going to behave like livestock, and you're going to be treated like livestock. And unfortunately, there's a lot of livestock on this planet that has uh, outlasted their usefulness to the people at the top. Uh, what do they call you? Uh, superfluous carbon footprints. 
So they're going to instigate some sort of conflict, and, and we're just going to kill one another. We're going to starve each other to death. We're just going to look at our, our, our countrymen, our, our friends, our families, and we're going to murder them because they don't use the same label that we use. Or we start attributing uh, uh, qualities to them that aren't even dictated by them. It's dictated by some actor sitting in the background. That we never truly even assault. How do you assault them? Well, you learn the law. You learn the law. You know what you're talking about. Then, if you have them, you know, you look at the major, uh, the, um, the amount of people in this country that, it, it, that think in a, in a particular way, right? Let, let, let's look at the conservatives. Let's look at the people that want to make America great again. You're not going to make America great again if the people themselves aren't great again. Me, I work on making people great again, and not, not just in this country, but every country. You know, th this book has things in it for every man and woman on this planet. It is an equity system of governance that doesn't require one man to lord over another man. It is a community of equals acting in their own best interest. That is not what's occurring here in this United States right now. We're killing each other. It's disgusting. And while we do that, the people that are truly perpetrating this fraud and ruse on us, they get off scot-free. You're trusting criminals to throw criminals in jail. Let me see how, you know, just let me know how that works for you. All right? So, uh, I'm going to put this out here. Uh, I'm sure it's going to make uh, a lot of people angry. Uh, I do not intend any offense to anybody who is Muslim. I would be the last one in the world to criticize anybody who is in complete submission to the Supreme Being whatever name you want to call him or her. And if you believe that that being gives you power over me, <laughs> come on by. Otherwise, you can help me help you, and we will all live as peacefully as we can. I'm Roach. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good day.